Howdy, y'all. Richard Avery, Titanium Computing, coming to you from Austin, Texas. Uh, not sure if you're aware, but y'all is, is required learning here uh, by law now here uh, due to new regulations. Um, I want to talk about MFA and the good and the bad and the horror stories that come along with it and why it is not the panacea that people treat it as. Now, don't take me wrong. You have to have it, or you should have it. You should have MFA on absolutely everything. If you've got an opportunity for MFA on your email, on your bank account, on your social media, everything that you've got, you should have MFA on in some way, shape, or form. But that's not enough. You need to understand what MFA is. MFA stands for multi-factor authentication. Some people call it 2FA because it's a password, something you know, combined with an authenticator app that might be on your phone. Maybe you've got a software key. Maybe they send you an SMS text, something else besides the password, and that's the two. The M is replacing the two because you can have more than two. Uh, and in some cases, you should have more than two. Um, for some things, you can even have a hardware token. Uh, a UB key, like one of these, is going to be useful if you want to have that security elevated from something you know to something you have and something that somebody else can't necessarily steal or take, especially if you can lock that key up. That means that you can take your portability access with you and then that they could steal your laptop and your laptop isn't going to be the target of the attack, uh, especially if you've got your laptop encrypted, at least with BitLocker, if not some other sort of security product. But let's talk from a greater standpoint of the pitfalls of, of MFA. And when I say about the pitfalls of MFA, I mean, what does multi-factor authentication do anyway? Well, what that does, and technically this happens for passwords too, you're not using your password to get into your account. Let me explain what I mean by that. Typically, if you put your password somewhere, if you go to log into a web page and you give them your username, you give them your password, they hand you back a token. And that token is how long is that authenticated access good for? This is why people still get hacked and their accounts still get compromised with MFA. They're just not getting compromised from some guy in a third world country logging in with, you know, is it Billy password? Is it Willie password? Is it William password? Like, they're not going to get in with that because your two-factor or multi-factor is going to stop them over and over and over again. Do you have the right username? Yes. Do you have the right password? Yes. Have you triggered multi-factor authentication? No. But multi-factor authentication still just gives you a token. So the token is what you're actually needing to protect more than anything else. Is your password important to protect? Yes. Is your... Uh, username important to protect? Yeah, yeah, you're probably handing your username out. It's probably your email address. So you're like, hey, here's my username. Come log into my account. Um, but ultimately, you need to understand that the token lives on your device. It's there. Sometimes it's a cookie. Sometimes, depending on how bad things are programmed, uh, it could literally just be a string that's already pre-authenticated. Right? There's lots of ways, so we're trying to, trying to bring this down to a simple level. So we're going to talk about tokens. So I hand you my username, I hand you my password, and then you say, please use the Google Microsoft Authenticator. Uh, we sent you a code to your phone number on file. We sent you a code to your email on file. That's the worst. Don't use that. Um, do not use your email as the multi-factor authentication for your your services and products if somebody compromises your email. Right, hopefully you can follow that train of logic. 
um, because we've ran into that. Somebody gets their email account compromised and then all that email is the two factor for a bunch of other stuff and poof, now you've lost a lot of things. Have it be on another device. If you've got your email on one device, have it at least be, shouldn't be, but at least be SMS. You should have some sort of authenticator app. That's the best option. Authenticator app uh, even exists inside things like 1Password or Password Vaults can be part of your authenticator app or your OTP, your one-time pass, one-time pad, one-time passcode, depending on who you listen to and what that acronym stands for. So you've logged in, username, password, multi-authenticator triggers, you authenticate, you're in. So now that you're in the system, the system has given you a token and that token has a time window. Imagine I hand you the keys to my car and the key, and that key is only good for 30 days. You now no longer need to provide your username. You no longer need to reprovide your password. You no longer need to multi-authenticate because that token is good for 30 days. Depending on the infrastructure and the software and the platform and a whole bunch of other things, maybe that token is only good for that IP address. Maybe it's only good for that device. Or maybe I can just copy that token out and I can move that token to another device and I can sign in from there. Now, this means you need to protect your network and you need to protect your endpoint. The, the device that is receiving that token needs to be protected as much as you want to protect the token, right? It's the concept that each one of them is a key and you're using multiple keys to unlock access to the infrastructure and how long are those keys good for? And do you control how long those keys are good for? Let's say you log into an EMR, a, um, a electronic medical records system. And it two factors you, it says here's your username, Here's your password and here's the token. And the token is only good for an hour. Well, everybody's gonna be screaming like crazy for this company to change how long that token is good for or at least change how long they can control it's good for. Meaning, for example, in Microsoft land, you can control how long somebody can get reprompted Maybe it's 30 days, maybe it's seven days, maybe it's two weeks. You can control how long it takes before they are forced to re-log in and re-authenticate with their multi-factor authentication. This is really critical because if you're authenticating and using a multi-factor in an environment, we'll use the, uh, the famous coffee shop as a conversation, uh, you're logged into a coffee shop, you're on a public Wi-Fi or a Wi-Fi that's shared and not properly segregated, it happens all the time. You log in, you are, you think you're secure. This is where a VPN would come in handy. Um, you're going to log in with your username, log in with your password, log in with your multi-factor. You're going to trigger the multi-factor, but that token is coming across the network and could be grabbed by somebody else on that local network. It could be grabbed by somebody on your device if somebody's dwelling there. So if you think your device is compromised, changing all your passwords and relogging into all your stuff doesn't work because they're there. They're there to get the token and the token stays in the same place. It's held, oh, hey, where's the token go? Oh, this is where I put the token. Great, it's not like it randomly puts it in the computer somewhere that the hacker has to then go research where that token goes. No, it, it's in the same place nearly every single time. So you need to secure your device. You need to secure your endpoint. And you need to secure the communication of that token. If you don't have visibility from point A to point B, at least as much as you can control, because you can't control the internet past your firewall, um, that's your internet service provider's job. You need to know where that token is traveling from the cloud infrastructure service that you're using to your device. And you might want to adjust how long that token is good for. All of that said, you also need to understand that 
cloud infrastructure can get compromised. And we're seeing more and more of that where the cloud infrastructure, Microsoft, Google, uh, it, it does pick one. It doesn't matter. They're just the big ones to, to pick on and tease because they own such a significant portion of the market. AWS certainly is the same. Uh, I know people that literally troll GitHub for people uploading master keys for AWS. Oh, thanks for your master login. I'm going to go spin up a bunch of Docker containers and mine Bitcoin. Not that that's effective use of anybody's money at this point in time, but it's certainly a thing that has happened in the past. It's going to happen in the future as people still do bad password, bad token management. People talk about passwords, but they're not talking about tokens. They're not talking about how to control that token. And they're not talking about how that token needs to be protected and secured because most people haven't had this explained to them. They just think, I've got a username. I've got a password. I've got a multi-factor. And you think those all go in a slot and then you're just allowed magically into the environment. No, you're handed a token and that token has an expiration date. And depending on the infrastructure, you might want to control that expiration date. Most likely, if you're not paying for it, you won't be able to control it. Uh, if you are paying for it, Microsoft, Google, a bunch of other function, uh, a bunch of other infrastructure out there that you're paying for, multi-tenant infrastructure. Um, you're possibly going to be able to control the time frame and the triggering of that token so that you can either control your security posture in a tighter manner or expand it in a less secure manner because maybe your employees don't want to log in every seven days. Maybe they want to log in every 30 days and maybe the infrastructure is secure enough and you've tested it to know it's secure enough that that's an acceptable security practice for your organization. So hopefully this has taught you something about MFA and securing the token that the MFA and the login actually gives you. Because if you're not securing that token, you're not really securing anything. Thanks a lot. Don't forget to check out our next video over here. We're going to steamroll you right into something else on our platform so that you can learn more about cybersecurity and how you should be securing your company and your infrastructure.